back to order at 752. We will continue discussing the uh, tenure forecast and we're going to ask council to accept the report as information in a moment here. And we're going to proceed to have a special council meeting called in the very near future to allow councils to bring forth their suggestions, thoughts, ideas for the capital budget going forward for next year's budget deliberations. It'll give the administration time to price out the various uh, ideas that are brought forth by the council members and the special council we will have in the very near future, hopefully uh, very soon. And we've discussed momentarily ago. So that's how we're going to proceed. Um, with that, I'll open the floor to any further questions from council on the 10 year, um, one second here, on the 2023 capital plan review and the 10 year capital plan. Are there any further questions for administration? See none, I'll ask for a motion from council to accept the report as information. Councilor Barnhart, Kathy, you have the floor. Thank you, Mayor. I will make that motion to accept this report for information. Thank you, Councilor. Discussion on the motion, Council? Seeing none, I'll ask you to vote, please. And that passed unanimously. Thank you, Council. <coughs> Next item on our agenda is 7C, feasibility of constructing a recreational vehicle RV Sandy Station. Administration will speak to this report. What about what about oh, this one? The sorry. motion following notice G seven G. Sorry, seven C was pulled off. Seven G G. I pulled it off the consent. Oh, we did that one. Seven okay. C was pulled off consent. Was it not? Did okay. I miss something? Okay, so, I thought I had it right. Okay. No, I'm not looking at the one. That's not looking at this one. The okay. ice time. Sorry, Kathy. You have a um, question. Go ahead, please. Oh, I must be looking at an agenda that hasn't been updated. I'm looking at Councillor McCook and Councillor Miller, uh, vandalism and loitering. No, we're going to, we're on 7C. Right 7 7A 7 was a 10-year capital plan. 7C I'm now is where um, it's pulled off consent. Gotcha. Okay. Councillor McCarthy, swain you have a comment, a question? I don't know if point of order is the right term or not. Um, okay. But... So I heard what you said. We accept that as information. Then I also heard that you're gonna we're gonna make a motion to have a special council meeting, whatever that looks like. Can you just clarify where, when in the process we're gonna do that? Um, my understanding was a very near future. I didn't have a specified motion for that. Councilor, or sorry, Ms. Winter, can you specify if I need to have a motion for a special council meeting? Um, thank you, Mayor. Uh, through you to Councilor. Um among um, Swain, um, we don't require a motion to schedule a special meeting. The mayor has the ability to call a special meeting. So what I'll be doing is sending out tomorrow to get availability for council members on when they'll be available to attend a special meeting. And then the other part of it um, about submitting those um, those lists electronically, I'll be sending an email following up on that as well. Okay, th thanks. I, I just heard motion and, and then I didn't see or hear a motion. It so was just the motion to accept the report as information, but then I'll be following up with with what happens next for sure. next steps. Okay. So I'll be sending that email out tomorrow. Meeting, I, I didn't yeah, no, no, that, that's okay. I I no, and maybe I, that's what I heard, but okay. can I just speak to that for two, two seconds? So um, sure. one, I don't know if we need a special meeting. We've got to commit to the whole meeting next week where we're all here and maybe we can just tack it onto that. I'll, I'll leave that to you. Um, but second, just thank you for indulging me in that process. Indulging is probably not the right word, um, but mm -hmm. thank you for listening there and, um, and and being responsive to that. Um, I think that's the, the the right approach, and hopefully that gives council enough time to to be prepared for whenever that that discussion is. So mm -hmm. thank you for hearing it, and, and apologies if the tone was a little direct. Um, no, thanks. You're welcome. That's why I took the break to make sure I had procedure right to make sure we can address concerns of council and make sure administration has the proper information to do their job as best they can. So I thought it best to take a break and get that clarified. So thank you for that. And you're welcome. Happy to indulge councillors, making sure they have the proper information to do our jobs as council. So everyone has to work together and I do appreciate that. So thank you for clarifying that. So there's no need for a motion for the special meeting. I have the authority to call one. So yay, I, I called that. We'll, we'll figure it out as soon as we possibly can. So now we're on to 7C, feasibility of construction a recreational RV site, Sandy Station. Who from administration will speak to that at this point? Who would require anybody to speak to it? It came off consent. Yeah, I guess I'll Josh, Mr. Gale, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Gale. 
You have the floor, please. Thank you. Um, the microphone, you please. The, the Mike, a little closer to them. Yeah. Is it better now? That's much better. Yeah, Thank thanks. you. Um, good evening, Council. So, um, with the report being pulled off the consent agenda, I'll uh, present this report the feasibility of constructing an RV sandy station. <clears throat> So the purpose of this report is to um, provide council with information on the feasibility of constructing an RV sanding station in Beaumont, including potential costs, funding available, potential locations, and relevant information. Um, so with this report, we, <clears throat> first off, just talking about the actual sanding station, what it'd be comprised of. So that would include overhead lighting, curbing, bollards, hose connections, uh, a paper use potable fill connection, drainage and spill containment, and then signage that's required. So um, the needs of the facility would be obviously a connection to a sanitary and water distribution sources, uh, as well as available power. Uh, and then of course, before we would move forward with any um, particular site at, at selection, we'd have to make sure that the analysis was, was done to determine that the flow uh, and usage rates that uh, for the system capacity could be could be handled within that design. So this report considers two um, potential possible locations for a facility, um, which would include one, a future campground site and two, a future eco station site. So uh, in the rec recreation master plan, um, identified uh, a specific location that you can see in attachment one, there's a little map and a, and a potential rendering of that site. Uh, further to this in 2020, um, Beaumont and Leduc County are uh, provided a feasibility study for a joint use recreation area um, located to the west here of, of Beaumont. And that uh, preliminary plan does include an RV campground that would include a SANI station. <clears throat> so uh, so those, that's the campground potential option. And the, the next option would be a eco station option. Um, so the, as far as location of where the eco station would would go eventually that that uh, design and overall siting has hasn't been completed um but just like the uh, city of leduc uh eco station with the with the sandy station built into it it'd be a complementary addition to that facility um and we suspect that a likely location for an eco station would be the operations facility yard so so those are the two locations. Um, as far as costs are concerned, you know, costs are highly dependent on uh, the overall site selection and you know, the proximity to utilities, the proximity to road access, et cetera. So you know, we're expecting <clears throat> up to $450,000 of cost uh, for a sandy station, depending on that proximity to utilities and depending on the design to get there uh, with an annual operating maintenance cost of approximately $5,000 per year. Um, so within our 2023 capital budget, we did allocate $20,000 for the overall design with the expectation that uh, once uh, a siting location landing point for a sandy dump was established, we could integrate that into the forward budget. Uh, so that is the report and brief. Are there any questions on that? Gale. My mic's on. Thank you, Mr. Gale. Appreciate that. Moving up to questions from council, from Mr. Gale and his report on the RV sanding station. Councillor Tessier, Renee, you have the floor. Thank you, Mayor. I'd just like to just discuss this a little bit. Um, so the, the report's great. Thank you. And a lot of that was from that master plan and including that campground, right? Uh, to me, I, I don't really see us building a campground anytime soon or, or getting that land, it's gonna cost a lot of money. And as we can see from our other expenditures, we have bigger needs in order in the next bunch of years, right? Uh, I've always thought it would be a great spot at operations yard. And, and like this report, it does say uh, in the future, we're gonna have an eco station at that ops yard, right? So it gives us that opportunity to, to start that, you know, drive in, drive out, type of thing that that most city, well, pretty much every city in smaller towns have. Um, would it be, what would it look like if, if I were to put a motion forward to see um, the design done before the budget and this included in the budget? Would we have enough time from administration to accomplish that? Um, so it'd be, 
So I guess design is one thing, but actual siting, site selection. Are you asking for design and site selection? Site selection would be option two that you have here, which would be operations yard. Right. Okay. So, so taking the campground completely out of the picture and just getting a sandy station done, which would open the door to an eco station down the road as per the plan. Cause honestly, the, the upgrades to the lion's park looks really good um, with the upgrades to the electrical and the fence. And I, for, I don't foresee us getting a campground. And if we were to do it, I would have seen it probably next to the dog park and the softball or the baseball diamonds for that type of camping. So um, to me, I'm just looking for direction on if uh, that could happen, if I put that motion forward or if that is too much of a rush, but. Yeah, I would say <clears throat> given the, you know, what it takes to initiate a design, uh, it would be unlikely to get anything together to have some sort of uh, firm cost estimate on uh, a site selection this year. I, I defer to Mr. Lewick if you've got any other further comments on that, but I, yeah, I can't see it, but. Mr. Lewicki, you gotta get your mic there. There you go. Uh, through the mayor to Councillor Tessier, um, the idea of tendering a design this late in the year, uh, we're at capacity with our uh, municipal projects team is, is just barely, getting done what we need to do. And so taxing them with yet another project to try to rush through to get a design done. Also, I don't believe we may we might get best dollar value for a design at this point late in the year. A lot of a lot of firms are have their backlogs for the year. Our plan was to do the design in 2023 so that we could hit it early, assuming we get obviously this is not an approved budget, but we would put that forward as a budget item for 2023, do our design for 2023, allow us a little more time to understand our siting locations and things like that. And, and then currently it's, sited, currently it's situated as a 2024 construction. However, as, as Mr. DeBlanco had indicated, those, it, it's, it's a placeholder essentially. So we're kind of looking like, Yes, we have it. We understand that it needs to be done. It is a commitment, but we're not sure exactly when we should do it. There's also the operations yard. We need to consider longevity of, of a sandy station at that location for reasons that were discussed in previous uh, council sessions. So we want to make sure we're, we're giving this uh, good consideration before we move forward and just slam out a design and throw it in, in the ops yard. So our plan is to put a lot of thought into it, definitely proceed with the design in 2023, and then understand where the best location is for this. Understanding that wherever, you know, typically eco stations are located near a sandy dump or they're near a campground. So that was the idea behind the recommendations for the two locations. Understanding your concerns with the campground being built, you know, th that could be a ways out. So um, there are options there, but I guess what I'm saying is for 2022 to try to rush through a design, I don't think that's the best option for us. And it would be really difficult from a resource perspective. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for that response. Thank you. Uh, I got a couple more comments after I'll let other councillors weigh in. If they please. Thank you, Councillor Chessie. Councillor McCross-Swain. Sam, you have the floor. Yeah. For what it's worth, I, I hear Mr. Lewicki and understand the, the challenge of trying to pull this together so quickly. Um, uh, so I agree that, you know, the process that is outlaid in the report um, uh, I'll just, uh, I think this is just a good example of, of the message that we're, that I was trying to communicate before around um, Councillor Tessier brought this up last year and then in February. And, and, and so now we're at the time at, at the end where we're again too late, right? So I just, I just wanted to highlight that uh, the example, not to pile on, uh, but that that's the, that's the, a good example of what, what we're trying to do, but I, um, the mayor's found a, a good solution here, not going to solve this particular issue, Councillor Tessier. 
um, but I think a good real uh, example for what I was trying to get to before. So um, yeah, I agree with the recommendation to, to put it into the budget for the design and study and, and see where that goes um, at budget time. Obviously it's just a recommendation now and we'll see if it gets, uh, gets funded. So I'll leave it there. Thank you. Seeing the further questions from council, Councilor Tessier, you mentioned a follow-up comment. Do you wish to make, it, make any follow-up comments? Okay, then I'll ask for motion to accept this report's information and then we're done talking about it. Just, just so you know, you mentioned you're good for now, but there is no now after make the motion. After we vote, there's no, there's no more. Just, yeah, so just you're comfortable. Well, I understand that special meeting is the problem with this stuff, right? It will be, but as far as tonight goes, you mentioned you're good for now, so <laughs> tonight will be done. Okay, so good for tonight, right? Okay, just so we're, just so you're clear, we're comfortable. Okay, is there a member of the council wishing to make the motion to set this information as this report is information? Councilor Tessier. Thank you, Mayor. I'll move that the September, I can't see very well, 13th, 2022 report, feasibility of constructing an RV Sandy station be received for information. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Discussion on the motion from council members? See none, I'll ask you to vote. Pass unanimously. Thank you, Council. Our next item on our agenda, I'm not sure I'm missing anything here, is 7G, the notice of motion. The following, so notice following motion, vandalism and loitering around school playgrounds. Council Miller and Council McCook. So we'll put that notice of motion, or more, sorry, Motion after notice, we put the words around. Summer breaks kill me for terminology. And I'll ask Councilor McCook or Councilor Miller to make the notes of motion and then we'll uh, we'll talk about it. Sure. Councilor Miller, Ashley, you have the floor. Sure. Would you like me to speak to it first? Yes. Or, yes. Ashley, make the motion <clears throat> first, then speak okay. to it. Thank you. Oh, okay. So, um... I make that administration in consultation with local RCMP and school representatives prepare a report to council by the end of Q4 2022 on history and frequency of loitering and vandalism around school playgrounds in Beaumont, including St. Andre Academy School Playground. Uh, what actions, if any, have been taken to date to address these issues and what options, if any, are available to the city to address concerns related to this area? Thank you. Um, <clears throat> So uh, the basis of this was originally started by uh, residents having some concerns, and I, I think we've all seen them come from uh, specifically St. Andre Playground, where there's um, needles and vials and vandalism and graffiti uh, around that playground. Uh, so uh, that being a concern, uh, we talked about lighting, we talked about um, RCMP patrol around that area. Uh, this is basically just to have more information on um, as Councillor McCook expanded it to, you know, if it's happening at one playground, how frequently is it happening at the other ones or um, in and around the community? So that's what the basis of this motion is for. I'm not sure, just that being said, that we need to have in here, including St. Andre Academy. I just think overall, every playground needs to be looked at. So I don't think we need to, we could probably take that out, that it's including St. Andre uh, School. It includes all schools in my in my mind. So that is uh, that is what that motion is about. Thank you, Councilor. Mm -hmm. uh, McCook, you wish to make any additional comments as you just have a joint notice of motion? Yeah, I think just in order to um, properly address the issue and um, kind of ensure the safety of the playground, likely in conjunction with um, Black Gold and the the. Um, Catholic school districts um, just to gather like a holistic view of is this happening specifically at one playground or is it an issue across the city um, and then definitely what options um, are available to the sp city specifically to address um, concerns related to these areas. Thank, thank you, Mayor. Just just one that popped into my head when you were talking about that is that does that leave it open for um, conversations with the school boards about potential solutions, or is it all falling to the city? I mean, is that may not. 
what options are available to the city and the school boards to address concerns. But I, I just don't want them to be entirely out of, like the school boards are not mentioned in this motion. The schools are, school representatives. I, I'm just, I, I think that's our intention, but I just would not want this to be uh, only a city issue. I think it does require cooperation with school boards. I was under the impression that school generally would be the school and the school board. It, or, it, however, not my motion. Yeah, so if no that's the board. intent, then I. Sorry. Thank you. My mic was off. Sorry. I was in the impression the school representative would also include the school boards, but I'll ask Councilman Cook to speak to it. Go I, ahead, I, I mean, I think so. Um, I'll, I can let Councilor Miller weigh in as well. I think mostly the goal of this is to gather information to get an understanding of what needs to be done. So um, I think more of that information would come from the RCMP and, and yeah, administrations at the school board because they would have an idea as to how often this is occurring and if it is an issue at each one um but and then and then we'll get the options available to us in conjunction with um administration so the school administration okay so maybe we do need to add that well school representatives we do have that okay so i'll go to i'll go to ashley first to to additional additional information and then i'll go back to yeah Hang on a second. We got five buttons going here. Ashley. Thank you. Uh, to me, the, the basis of this motion is not to pinpoint who is responsible for the solutions. Right now, we are just wanting to gather what is happening. We're asking school representatives to provide feedback on what is happening because they're at the school, but we're not, we're not at this time dictating this falls under the school board, this falls under the city. That'll be determined once the information comes back. That's it. Okay. Did that answer your question, Council Barnhart? Let's answer it. I, I just would not want this to go ahead without the school board being involved. That's that's an opinion of mine, if that's intended to be part of this. But I wouldn't want, I don't think our city administration would do this, but I don't think we would be talking to the schools about something like this and not let our colleagues at the school board know we're doing it. So I'm, I'm going to assume that the administration was going okay, to. Okay, I'm going to get that clarified right now for us. If I could ask administration to offer a suggestion that as this motion is worded, would the school boards be included in the conversation or do we look to have the school boards mentioned in the motion to provide clarity? Ms. Bujaya? Um, my understanding in helping to draft the notice of motion originally was that we would include consultation with school representatives, meaning the school boards particularly, or other representatives from uh, the various schools. We left it broad just to allow us some flexibility. I think where Councillor Barnhart was expressing some concern is the last bullet point. It cur currently reads what options, if any, are available to the city to address concerns related to this area. I think if I understood Councillor Barnhart, she was saying, she wants the options to not be limited to actions the city may, may, would take, but just options in general. So I think we have to tread lightly because we have to stick within our jurisdiction. Um, we could change the motion slightly to say what options are available to address these concerns and leave it a little more flexible. Um, and then that information would be provided to council with the knowledge that there's only certain things that are within the city's purview and other things that may be within the school's purview or the purview of the RCMP. Okay, my uh, understanding of the motion was the report would provide council and administration with options that we have control over uh, and we can then take action that we feel we can take based on the report. That was my interpretation from talking to Council McCook and Councilor Miller before. Uh, if they see no need to change their motion, I'm fine with the way it is, but do you, see, do you wish to amend your own motion slightly or are you okay with the way it is? I'm, I'm okay with the way it is. And I just wanna clarify though, if we change the wording from representatives to boards, um, this information that we have gathered, well, a lot of the information that like I was, um, you know, informed about came from from staff at the school, not necessarily anyone on school boards. So I don't want to shoot it 
too far up the ladder that it gets lost in translation and it becomes this major process. I mean, it's just literally people had reached out. This is what's going on at the school playgrounds. So that's, that's, yes, I am okay with that wording. You're good. It's a joint motion. Councilman Cook, do you wish to add anything additional comments? Kat? Thanks, Ashley. Yeah, I would agree. I think the people on site are the ones that would have the best information as to what the issues are, how often they occur, um, rather than the boards themselves. So more gathering information, understanding the scope of the problem. And is this just something that needs to be addressed at one school and that's the only issue? Then then that's next steps because then that's, you know, dealing with school boards and whatnot. So thank you, Kathy. Your question's been answered. You're you're okay. Oh, sorry, your mic. Um I I guess I wouldn't want to be a member of the school board and not know this was happening. And and it I I don't assume that's not going to happen, but I think there's when you say not push it too far up the ladder, I can't imagine that we would be having these conversations with all the schools and not be talking to the school. And there are three school boards. So I, I guess I don't know what the resistance is here to make sure the school board is part of that conversation, but that's that's my concern. That, that we're stepping into territory that's not all ours. They have responsibility to manage the land and to work on that land. So I'm just feeling we're, we're we're reaching a little bit too far without doing it in collaboration with the school board. That that's my only concern, and I want this to happen. I'm not against the intent of it. I and I think the administration hears what I'm saying. I just maybe I'm worried about needlessly because this is going to take care of it. But nowhere does it say that the administration is going to be in consultation with the school board. We have local RCMP and that school boards. I'll repeat, we have three school boards. And school representative. So I, I'd like to throw in their school board, but again, I'm just one voice, and that's my opinion. So based based on my conversations with school board members, I think we need to show that we're working together with them and not be doing something that's okay. It's in their best interest. So I, I can't see where that would be a problem. Okay, I appreciate that. So before I go to Councilor Manuka and Councilor Tessie, are you discussing this topic at hand or are you a different question, Steve? Because you're next to speak. Different question or weighing on in this? Sorry, yeah. you have the floor, Steve. Yeah, thank you. And uh, the third bullet point, I think, off the hop is, as Ms. Bouget said, uh, what is you know what is or was causing some of the uh, Councillor Barnhart's initial concerns, I think. And uh, the question that I had wrote down is, you know. What we've said there is what options, if any, are available to the city to address concerns related to this area, and I think that's a pointed um, that's a pointed look back at um, you know understanding that we're looking at what we can control, and, and that's that's what the output requested by this notice of motion is. Now, um, the flip side of that, uh, when the report comes back, we're you know if if we approve this as is, we're going to get back what we asked for, and it's going to say these are the things that we can control. And then you know, the people who had the concerns will look at the report and they'll say, okay, if you can't do anything about it, who can, right? And so, you know, that's where, you know, that's where the information goes. Uh, you know, we've looked at what we can control and, uh, and for myself, just backing up um, and listening to the, the genesis of this notice of motion, it, this issue has made it into the city of Beaumont council chambers. Um, so if the issue could have been uh, solved, extinguished, uh, what, whatever word, uh, previous to ending up in the city of Beaumont council chambers, it would have, but it hasn't. So it's here. Um, and that's why it's in front of us. So, um, you know, one of the things I was going to suggest is, you know, and if not the role of the city, can we identify who has what role to provide future solutions? But I think that would actually be the overstep. I think we should look at what we have in front of us here and uh, what can we control as a city. So um, I, I'm happy with supporting um, Councillor McCook and Councillor Miller with with the way it's written and uh you know would anticipate that that uh look to the city representatives would occur as uh has been discussed so yeah thank you thank you councillor councillor tessie are you on this discussion or a new a new angle on this motion just to comment on the whole motion so i don't know if they got anything on it but oh okay uh thank you mayor 
I just want to say I'm in favor of being on the RCMP committee. We see the school resource officer and then the new RCMP member, Shyla, which is our crime prevention officer, um, should be able to give some good information on this. And we literally just talked about vandalism in the schools, along with vaping and other things yesterday. So, um, yeah, looking forward to the report when it comes back. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Miller. Ashley? Sorry, just in closing, just to uh, address your your concerns, Kathy, because I, I hear those and that that is completely fair. I, I do want to say, though, that the school representatives are in, from my understanding, in conversations with the school boards already. Um, that's how this came kind of came to light. And, and I, and I think we also have to be careful of our roles too. you know, anything that happens at the school, is it up to us as, as the city to bring it to school boards, or is it up to the school representatives to bring it to their boards? Like, I'm not sure where the, where that lies, right. And how far we go. So that being said, I know a lot of these people that are representatives are not just, you know, just anyone I know there is conversations and there has been for a long time on on that with the boards so it's my closing comment thank you councillor see no further comments or questions from council I'll ask you council to vote on the motion carries unanimously thank you council our next item on our agenda now is down to nine council inquiries, responses, and reports. Lists of uh, responses and inquiries have been dealt with with uh, the information passed back to councils accordingly. Are there any any uh, new councilor inquiries um, this evening? Seeing none, I'll move on to the next part of our agenda, which is the CAO update. Mr. Dollar or Ms. O'Neill, who will be speaking on Mike Schwartz's behalf this evening. Mr. Dollar, thank you. You have the floor, sir. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Just a couple of quick items uh, as part of the CAO update tonight. Uh, Councillor Van Newkirk mentioned it earlier uh, in the meeting. Um, big grand opening for Elan neighborhood uh, occurred this uh, weekend, I believe, this past weekend. Um, as it was uh, relayed to me, it's a development that's been in the works for quite a while, since 2014. And at full build out, uh, it will welcome approximately 20,000 residents uh, to the city. So quite a substantial development for the community. Um, in somewhat relation to that, if uh, people are driving on the main arterial roads into the city, they hopefully will notice new signage uh, related to the new neighborhoods that have been posted or put up recently, uh, all looking very nice and uh, providing direction to the new neighborhoods for people entering the city. So okay. other than that, that's it for this evening. Thank you, Mr. Dollar. Appreciate that. Any questions, Mr. Dollar, for the CEO report? Seeing none. Uh, any notice of the motion from council this evening? Notice of the motion, pardon me. Seeing none. We have nothing in the closed session this evening. Before I adjourn, a couple of quick comments from myself. Um, I wanna uh, commend administration moving in the park tonight, it was Friday night. I attended the, the event, it was very well attended. Lots of small kids running around, having a great time. Spider-Man was there doing his thing. Uh, backflips like crazy and I, I would break my back thinking what he does, it's amazing. Uh, the kids loved him. It was well done by administration, another well done event. And many residents uh, mentioned to me in person, they were very happy with the event. And uh, actually some mentioned we should have a, a parents movie after the kids movie. Uh, so take your kids home and come back. I'm not sure how we would do that, but it's, it's food for thought for next year. Or maybe have a movie in the parents night only, no kids. Anyhow, something we could talk about maybe for next year as part of budget, I guess, in October. It'd be one more event to have to plan for, allow a small budget for, which is great. Uh, also, I also attended the LAN uh, opening uh, ribbon cutting on, on Saturday. Councillors Tessie and Councillor Barnard were able to attend. Your little kids had a good time, had some hot dogs and some other things. It was great. Um, very well done. A lot of good reviews from people. It looks very, very nicely done. And that park is now belonging to the city now. It's, it's now part of uh, our responsibility. And the park they have done is exceptionally well done. And um, the dream people were very complimentary on our land use bylaw. And they said to me, our land use bylaw allows them to do them in a lane with, 
ways to do things. And I'm not sure what they meant by that exactly. I'm trying to get more information, but they're very complimentary on work of the city, uh, getting a up and running and finally going. As Mr. Dollar said, there'll be 20,000 people there eventually. That's a lot of people. That's Beaumont times two. That's just one area. So it's very exciting. And uh, this coming Friday is the uh, first high school football game on the artificial turf multi-use field. It's uh, 145 is the opening ceremony. And did I, say, did I say Friday? Oh, man. Sorry, Thursday. I'll go Thursday. I recommend Thursday, um, not Friday. So it is Thursday. And uh, 2 o'clock is game time. It's the first home game of the high school. It's going to be very exciting. Lots of people. We've got food trucks. We've got kids' activities. And we're working on bringing in some extra bleachers. Mr. Suter has worked his magic to try and get us some more uh, spectator uh, bleachers. Hopefully, we'll have them by Thursday if we can. It may be great if uh, there'll be more events coming up in the fall so people will be able to sit and, and watch the game. So with that, I have no further comments. Council, administration, thanks this evening. We covered some interesting ground this evening, and we're going to make sure we get things done right for council administration, and that's our jobs, and we'll do it. We'll do it very well. I've I've expected.